Dr. Sam Abraham. Dr. Sam Abraham is a medical director of Abraham Infertility 4D Ultrasound Sonography Laparoscopy and Test Baby Center from uh, Chenga Cherry. He has awarded as a PhD in Hysteroscopy, Principles and Practice from the Open International University of Medicine, Kazakhstan Socialist Soviet Republic. He's going to talk on MD follicular syndrome. Here I'm going, I'm going to talk on MD follicular syndrome. What is MD follicular syndrome? It is a condition in which you don't get oocytes after an apparently successful ovarian stimulation. So, when you go to the literature, you can see there is genuine MD follicle syndrome. So, what is this genuine MD follicle syndrome and false MD follicle syndrome? In genuine MD follicle syndrome, you get an optimal level of human chorionic gonadotropin on the day of oocyte retrieval. Where, in spite of an optimal dose of human chorionic gonadotropin on the day of oocyte retrieval, where, where you don't get oocyte, that is a genuine MD follicle syndrome. So, genuine MD follicle syndrome, some people think that it doesn't exist. When you go to the literature, they think that it is only a reflection of the margin of the error attendant upon the procedure of oocyte aspiration. So there is no genuine MD follicle syndrome. But the literature is pointing to the fact that this condition is caused by a dysfunctional folliculogenesis where you have an early atresia of oocyte. This concept is very important. This is actually due to a dysfunctional folliculogenesis resulting in an early atresia of oocyte which contribute to GEFS where you have the adequate level of human chorionic chondrophin but you don't get successful oocyte. So it could be correlated with a dysfunctional folliculogenesis rather than the, the, the dose of HCG or the type of HCG used. So, I will follow our study la uh, later. It correlates that delayed maturation of oocyte cumulus complexes in response to SCG is an etiologic mechanism in this case. So, ac actually what you are getting is after 36 hours you are aspirating and you are getting a delayed maturation of the oocyte cumulus complex in response to SCG. So, it is an altered, uh, literature also comes to the conclusion that it is an altered alteration in the folliculogenesis. So, here what you get is a condition where it, which is very similar to the aspiration of the immature follicle where the germinal vesicle stage oocytes with dense scanty cumulus cells. When you look it under the microscope, either initially they may report that there is no free floating oocyte. Uh, but on further study, on carefully monitoring, they could see oocytes with dense candy cumulus cells, which are very difficult to identify under a dissecting microscope. So before you tell that there is no follicle at all, no oocyte is there, you have to go for a detailed study under a dissecting microscope. Now the incidence is around 0.2 to 7%. We know it is very frustrating, it is highly stressful for to the, both the patients and the IVF team where you see that you are getting follicles, where you correlate with your estradiol level, but you come out to the patient and tell that there is no, uh, you, you are not able to retrieve an oocyte, it is very stressful to counsel the patient and for the whole IVF team. So it was reported early in four patients with unexplained infertility. They underwent five cycles of in vitro fertilization. So it was initially grouped as a cause of unknown cause of infertility where they didn't get oocytes. So later this phenomenon was found in many cases, other causes of infertility also like endometriosis, other cases of uh, IVF where you, this could be seen. So, this condition was initially described as a failure to treat oocytes in the presence of a low beta ICG level. Where, they, where you see that you don't get follicles from one ovary, you are immediately asked to stop the procedure, look at the level of beta ICG and then do it at a later stage. So it was, uh, it was, correl it was correlated because of the low level of beta ICG. So that was the concept and even now it is there. So possible etiology is given was 
inappropriate administration of SCG by an incompetent staff or defect in the biological preparation of SCG, batch to batch variability, so many things are considered. Individual variation in the bioavailability and metabolism of HCG, genuine MD follicle syndrome was defined as the unsuccessful oocyte retrieval after apparently normal follicle development. When scanning, you are getting a rate of growth of the follicle is normal. When you estimate the beta HCG level, it is optimal on the day of oocyte retrieval. Then only you call it as MD follicle syndrome. So it could be. Uh, so many, when you go to the literature, you will find it confusing. Some say it is solely due to the difficulties during oocyte aspiration. Given the oocyte aspiration retrieval rate of only 80% despite the use of follicular flushing. So, failure to retrieve oocyte should be regarded as a sporadic event rather than a syndrome. In their study, they noted that four of these patients had a history of poor response to ovarian stimulation, implying that perhaps dysfunction is a role in this patient. So what is the problem? It is a clinical dysfunction with related to the granulosa cell function where you have an altered USA growth and early atresia. So this concept of an altered function of the granulosa cell function where you have the difficulty in diagnosing this situation based on the present modality has to be considered. So once a patient goes this, you can counsel the patient that they have got a 20% risk of recurrence in the rate of IVF cycles. The risk of in uh, recurrence increases with the age of the patient. So in a lady with 35 to 39 years, they have a risk of 24%, but it is 57% for those more than 40 years old. So you have to counsel the patient regarding this matter that the chance of recurrence may be there. So ovary reading, so leading to altered granulosa cell function, it is involved in the etiology of the syndrome and especially in its recurrence. So this recurrence of this uh, condition in three stimulated cycles in two sisters with congenital hearing loss was, is reported and it postulated that there could be an inherited genetic factor in its etiology. However, more reported cases are more detailed molecular investigations are necessary to verify this claim. Here I am giving a short report of the condition. The patient was followed with down regulation and patient was put on recombinant FSH 150 international units per day. After the three doses, the blood was taken and revealed an east level of about 86.9. The dose of uh, folic FSH was increased, recombinant was increased to 200 in last unit for another two days and repeated blood test revealed a satisfactory rise of east level level. TVS showed 12 follicles, 215, 114, 813 and 112 millimeter follicle. Ultrasound was repeated two days later revealing a growth to about 219, 181. 17 millimeter 4, 15 millimeter 4, and 13 millimeter follicles. SCG was given intramuscularly, and pickup was done 36 hours later. SCG was given at the correct time, approximately 36 before, hours before USA retrieval. Blood was taken for hormonal study. Because of, we correlate in these stage patients where we have a disordered growth in the early stage, we try to correlate with the beta SCG. It was found to be about 851 international unit per liter. FSH 12, LH less than 0.1, estradiol of 2637, and progesterone 37.5. This is important. The progesterone level was about 37.5. So 30, 36 hours before SCG was given, and the hormonal study was undertaken at the time of aspiration. So 12 follicles were aspirated, no oocyte was obtained. So the embryologist was supposed to look second time, third time before a tentative diagnosis of MD follicle syndrome was made because the Doppler study was very supportive, follicles was there, and Easter day level was correlated, prostate level is ideal. So on, on forcing the embryologist at a closer look, half of the follicular aspirate discarded. Later she told that she could find some early germinal vesicle stage 
oocytes were identified in the fluid. So they had a very scanty amount of humulus cells, and uh, it was almost difficult to identify them. It had to be discarded, and we counseled the patient, and she was posted in the next cycle. At four months after the incident, she was again posted, and she was given HMG in a dose of 225 units for, for three to nine consecutive days. And she was given endogenous cycle, SCG was given, and oocyte retrieval was done 36 hours later. 12 oocytes were obtained, and nine embryos were produced by AVF, and two embryos were transferred, and seven were freezed. Urine pregnancy test was positive. So a single gestational sac with yolk sac and fetal heart activity was visualized inside the uterine cavity. Pregnancy is still ongoing. So we know that premature LS surge, we cannot put it as, put as an explanation for this process. The presence of intact follicles at the time of USA retrieval again points to the fact that there was no premature LS surge. Now, the retrieval of oocyte aspiration, you know, is about 80%. So extreme, uh, it was done by the same, it was done by me in both the cases. So error inherent to the procedure is practically unlikely as an explanation in this procedure. But initially, when you look at, you can see that it responded poorly to ovarian stimulation. That is why we resorted to uh, HMG in the cycle, and FSH LH, we could see that it was in the range of 6 and 1. So abnormal folliculogenesis could have occurred at the beginning of the cycle. And normal level of estradiol and progesterone on the day of oocyte retrieval didn't support the convention of the others that it is due to early atresia of the oocyte. So abnormal folliculogenesis could poss possibly modify the follicular response to an early trade of HCG, there is a delayed detachment of the oocyte complex from the follicular fluid following SCG injection. So coming to a conclusion, when we look to the literature of the, uh, uh, this uh, MD follicle syndrome, it is confusing. This is the, so only, I am reporting only one case which I had, but in the literature, we find conflicting reports. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sam.